Hello everyone, welcome to Body Bags. I'll be your reviewer for today. I'm Lonnie from Terran Tats. And uh, yeah, I figured um, here it is, it's October, you know, Halloween, right around the corner, all that good fun stuff. And uh, I just realized a little while back when we were trying to pick what movies we were going to do for this month, I realized that um, I had already reviewed two trick-or-treats for the Body Bags channel. I had reviewed the uh, 1986 um, Trick or Treat, you know, about the, uh, directed by Charles Martin Smith, you know, the one about the the heavy metal rocker who, you know, um, the uh, Eddie Weinbauer accidentally, you know, brings back from the dead by playing this last record that Gene Simmons gives them, and he starts playing it backwards, and it starts, you know, basically it conjures up, you know, Sammy Kerr to come back from the dead to wreak havoc. I, I reviewed that one. And then um, here a while back when we did the uh, Scream Factory for the label week, I had uh, reviewed the, uh, the Scream Factory edition of the uh, 2007 horror anthology, the amazing 2007 horror anthology. And uh, I just picked this one up a little while ago. And I've actually watched it. I watched it on Amazon Prom Prime first, and then I came across it on Blu-ray for dirt cheap um i actually could have waited and done this one we you know we do a dollar tree week and stuff but anyway um this one here trick or treat is from 2019 is a british horror film now horror film i don't i don't really know if i would go that far to call it a horror film i mean the movie takes place on halloween um but halloween doesn't really like play into the movie it's not really about that it's just Kind of the story just happens to take place on Halloween, but you know. Anyway, though, uh, the story is about a man named Greg, and uh, it's coming up on you know it's Halloween night, you know, getting ready to come up on November first, and Greg is married to a girl named Gemma, and they have a baby, and uh, you know he's he's getting ready to celebrate his birthday. He's turning forty five years old. Well. The thing is, is Greg is pretty much going through a midlife crisis, and he's not happy at all. He's very miserable. He's not happy being married. He's not happy being, you know, having the responsibilities, having a child, needing to try to find, you know, a job, you know, a good, honest, um, you know, basically a nine to five, you know, help, you know, pay and support his family and things like this. And so he and Gemma, they're having discussions about this. Well, what we come to find out was that actually, uh, Greg used to actually be a gangster, and he was running around in circles with these gangsters and things like this, and he pretty much gave up that life when he realized he didn't want to murder people and things like this, and he realized he didn't have the stomach for that part of the gangster lifestyle, but, and so he decided to get out of that. He met Gemma, they fell in love, they got married, you know, had a daughter, Oh, but, you know, eventually, you know, the, the novelty wore off for him pretty much, and he just decided that now he's more miserable than he's ever been in his life. And Gemma is talking to him, you know, trying to explain to him that she loves him, and, you know, but she can't really take his moodiness and him just being in, you know, just being ticked off all the time and just, you know, being miserable because she's making him, or he's making her miserable, and things like this, and, like, something's got to change. She's talking about, you know, maybe they go to, like, counseling, you know, all this other kind of stuff, but she's trying to tell him that she loves him, and she doesn't want, you know, everything to go bad. So he's sitting, so, you know, Greg just kind of sits there, and he's, you know, he's smoking a, you know, smoking a fatty and everything, and then, uh, you know, he uh, gets a knock at the door, and he goes, and it turns out that it's his brother, Dan. And his brother pretty much runs in there. He He's acting frantic and, you know, just kind of, oh, my God, kid. You know, like, oh, you know, they, you know, they're brothers. They keep calling each other kid, you know. And he's like, oh, my God, kid. You know, it's like I accidentally killed somebody and, you know, I was driving and, you know, I was, yeah, I was drinking and everything else. I was high and all this kind of stuff. And, you know, I accidentally ran over this guy. I hit this guy with my car and I need your help and all this and so Greg is like, well, take the guy to the hospital. I said, the guy's dead, you know. And so he's like, well, you know, yeah, but you should still take him to the hospital. He's like, dude, you know, if they find out I'm going to jail, you know, and all this kind of stuff. It's like, you know, they're probably going to give me like 10 years and things like this. 
And so, uh, you know, he's like, kid, you got to help me out. You know, you're my brother. You got to help me out. You know, kind of like, you know, how brothers do. They try to guilt trip each other into, you know, helping each other out and do things for each other. So, you know, reluctantly, I mean, very reluctantly, Greg is, you know, kind of like deciding he's going to help his brother. And then he's kind of reverting back to his gangster days and, you know, how to dispose of a body, things like this. Well, next thing you know, there's another knock at, at um, Greg's door. And it turns out that it's Clarence and I forget the other character's name. And they come. Well, Dan runs off. He's like, hey, you know, if anybody asks, I'm not here. So he runs off. And so he goes to answer the door. It turns out it's this guy Clarence that he knew from his gangster days, and this other guy. And so they're looking for um, they're looking for Dan. Well, at first he's like trying to you know tell him, hey, I don't know where he is, and all this other kind of stuff. It's like, well, that's funny. You don't know where he is, but his car is parked right outside your house. And so he's like, okay, yeah. So you know, um, yeah, okay. So I did. Yeah, you know, he came by. You know, wish me a happy birthday. Then he took off and all this stuff. I was like, yeah, I don't believe you and all this. So we're gonna go see, you know, Mrs. Ferguson, who's kind of like the new mob boss. And so they take they take Greg to see, uh, you know, they take Greg to see uh, Mrs. Ferguson. And so he goes in and and she makes a deal. You know, it's it's essentially it's a crime film. It's mostly a crime film, a gangster movie. And so they take, you know, they take Greg in to see her and she tells him like, my son Baxter has disappeared and don't know where he is, haven't heard anything from him. And I, you know, he was supposed to go meet your brother. And so I need to know where your brother is and we got to find out where my son is and you have until 2 a.m., you know, and if you, you know, if your brother and my son ain't there by, you know, 2 a.m., it's things are going to get really, really bad. So, you know, uh, Clarence decides to take, you know, Greg over to this, basically it's like a sushi restaurant, you know, very fancy, ritzy restaurant, to see Karen, uh, Dan's girlfriend. And so they go in and, and, you know, he goes, you know, Clarence tells, uh, you know, tells uh, Greg, you know, go in there, talk to her, and then, you know, get your ass back here, pretty much. So he goes in, he talks to Karen, and ba- her, she's, it's one of these sushi restaurants where... Basically, she's laid out on the table naked and she's got, you know, like sushi on her and like, you know, these wealthy men will come in and they'll like eat the sushi off of her body, that kind of a thing. So he asks her, you know, you know, um, do you know anything about, you know, all this other kind of stuff? And she's like, no, but she's like, but um, she's like, yeah, I don't know where Dan is. She's like, honestly, I lost contact with him because I found out. He's actually having an affair with his brother's wife. Now, of course, this really gets Greg's attention. And he's like, whoa, wait a minute. So he goes back and, uh, you know, he goes back to his house. He slips. He slips past Clarence, gets car. Uh, Jason Fleming, who, you know, horror fans will remember from, uh, you know, you'll remember him from the beginning of Seed of Chucky. He played the Santa Claus that Chucky and Tiffany are killing. They'll remember him from movies like From Hell, or George Romero's Bruiser, things like this. Uh, he shows up. He's got, like, basically amounts to a cameo. He's in the movie for maybe all of, like, two minutes. Um, he plays the taxi driver. He gives Greg a ride back home. And, uh, you know, he's kind of telling him, you know, like, hey, life is a precious thing. Don't waste it. You know, appreciate what you have, that kind of thing. And so Greg goes in, and he talks to Dan, and then come to find out that actually what ended up happening was that uh, supposedly Dan was going in on a deal, kind of like a shady business deal, with um, with um, Baxter, you know, Mrs. Ferguson's son, and he decided to kill Baxter, and he's and that's why he's dead and in the trunk of his car, and so he's like, oh my God. And then at the same time, he's trying to find out that, uh, you know, hey, are you actually having an affair with my wife? And Dan constantly denies it, but, you know, everybody keeps, you know, as the movie goes on, everybody keeps, like, telling him, no, your brother is having an affair with your wife, they've been doing this for a long time, all this other kind of stuff. And so, basically, what ends up happening is that Greg ends up becoming really cold. He gets to the point, he no longer cares about his wife, he no longer cares about his daughter, you know, he just wants to kind of get things over with and basically just get out of the area 
and then you know so they're they're trying to figure out how they're going to dispose of the body and then the meanwhile they got the gangsters coming after them and just as the movie progresses it snowballs and it just you know oh man there are a couple of twists and turns some of them i think you'll see coming some of them maybe not as much but um Oh man, the whole thing, it just goes to hell in a handbasket. Um, overall, let's see. Yeah, this is a, it's a good movie, but here's the problem. Um, it's not, like I said at the beginning of the review, it's not really much of a horror film, to be honest with you. Um, there are a couple of sequences that are horror-like because, you know, there's a, there's a part where, um, where Greg is sitting in the car and he's, he's smoking, he's smoking a joint, he's trying to figure out how he's going to get rid of the body. And he has these hallucinations and things like this. And, uh, that's about as much horror movies it gets. The movie really is much more of, like I said, it's mostly, it's a gangster movie, kind of like a crime gangster movie that takes place on Halloween. So really Halloween doesn't really play into the movie at all. There's no monsters, there's no slashers, there's no boogeymen, there's none of that kind of stuff. And um, like I said, it, it's more like a crime caper. So honestly, would I recommend this? Um, I would recommend to watch it. You know, it's actually, it's not a bad movie. The actors do give good performances, you know, very solid performances. You know, good job by the acting and everything. It's just like, you know, it's Halloween, would you want to put this on? You know, for like a horror movie marathon, I really don't recommend this one. I would say, you know, there are three other trick-or-treat movies. There's the uh, slasher one from the 80s. There's the heavy metal one. And then there's the horror anthology. Any one of those would be a much better, um, much better selection to put on. If you're going to, if you want a, ho a horror movie to watch on Halloween called Trick or Treat, this is not going to be your best option. Any of the other ones would be a, excuse me. Any of the other suggestions would be a much better option than this one. Um, but I really don't, you know, I really don't think you should discount this movie. Um, it, it is a good British film. Like I said, it, it's it's uh, 80 minutes long, so it runs at a good quick pace. And, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't drag, you know, it doesn't overstay its welcome, none of that kind of stuff. Um, it does keep you interested. Uh, the first time I saw it, I was a little underwhelmed by it, mainly because I was expecting much more of a horror film. But, like, instead, I just kind of got a um, more like a crime caper. But the more I watch it, you know, it, it does tend to grow on me. It does have its charms. But just, like I said, you know, yeah, this is not really uh, the best one that I would suggest for the Halloween season. I mean, yeah, go ahead and put it on and watch it and everything, but just... Uh, just like I've said before, if you really, really want, you know, like a good horror movie for Halloween called Trick or Treat, any of the other ones would be a much better option. But still, check it out. It's not bad, you know, and uh, it's low budget, but, you know, still, anyway, that's pretty much about it. So, uh, yeah, like I said, give it a shot. You know, if you like British, you know, British films and everything else, which I do, I love British movies. And, uh, you know, just want something good and entertaining, quick pace, you know, this would definitely be a good watch. But just, anyway, so I'm not going to keep, I'm starting to repeat myself. I need to wrap this up. So uh, if anybody took the time to watch this, I thank you for doing it. And I appreciate you for doing it. Uh, I honestly hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a like. Um, if you haven't already, go and subscribe to the Body Bags channel. We have a different reviewer, one for every day of the week. Everybody's doing different stuff. And we get... I'm the Saturday reviewer. We have, you know, more uh, fun theme weeks coming up. We got, you know, all kinds of good stuff. Labor weeks, so on. So uh, that's uh, pretty much going to be it. Everybody take care. Have a good night. And uh, I'll talk to you later.